Okay, this is my Watch Dominion challenge. This is the React and Act challenge that Animal Safe Movement has put forward. The idea is to watch all of Dominion or a section of Dominion and with the hashtag, don't look away, and then to tag 10 of your friends as well. I've set it up with Bluetooth sound. I've set it up with a homemade projector so you can see what I'm seeing. Um, we're in the basement of my house. So we're going to watch the ducks section. I recently rescued with a team two of these beautiful beings from the wild. And a team in February of last year went inside an awful place in like near Toronto, just half an hour away from Toronto. And this is exactly what they found too. Okay, let's get started. All those little lives. As with broiler chickens, macerators are still used in duck hatcheries for the weak or deformed ducklings who aren't expected to survive the grow out. Duck farming shares many similarities with broiler and turkey farming. Struck from the hatchery on their first day of life, the ducklings are grown at an accelerated rate over just seven weeks, housed with thousands of others in rarely clean sheds where disease and fatalities are common. Ducks are aquatic animals, so they naturally have weak leg and thigh joints as they don't normally need to hold their body weight for extended periods of time. Where surface water is available, ducks will float for long periods, reducing pressure on the muscular and skeletal system. However, when surface water is denied, as in most Australian farms, including those located in free range, ducks must hold their entire body weight on their legs for up to seven weeks, often much longer for ducks kept for breeding, resulting in lameness, dislocated joints, and broken bones. Selective breeding aimed at growing ducks faster and heavier, coupled with the insufficient bone formation of their juvenile skeletal system, adds even more pressure on their already weak leg and thigh joints. Without water for even dipping their heads, ducks are unable to keep their eyes, nostrils, and feathers clean, worsening the risk of disease or blindness. Living in their own waste and the resulting high levels of ammonia can cause painful burns on their feet and exasperate wounds and injuries. You want to reach out and help them. These poor environmental conditions and overcrowding commonly lead to neurological disease where incoordination in head and neck tremors are followed by paralysis, convulsions, coma, and death. Just how can we do this to beautiful animals that people absolutely love? When sick or injured ducks are found by workers, they're killed by having their necks broken. Yeah. After 49 days, they're collected into crates and forklifted onto trucks to be sent to the slaughterhouse.
gentle, curious. Many don't survive the trip. Just like chickens and turkeys, ducks are hung by their feet onto the slaughter line. The typical electric stun bath, once again, is not always effective, with many birds having their throats cut open while conscious and eventually dying from blood loss or drowning in the skeleton tank. As of 2018, three states in Australia have banned the recreational shooting of wild ducks on cruelty grounds. But in Victoria, South Australia, and Tasmania, the practice remains legal during an open season each year. The population of water birds in Victoria has been steadily declining. In 2017, hitting the lowest numbers in 34 years. Yet the hunt continues under justification of increased business to the rural communities surrounding the wetlands and the general enjoyment and satisfaction felt by the hunters. You know, I'm just going to turn the sound off for this. Uh, we had two rescued ducks in, in this very room, two packing ducks uh, in a swim pool, a kiddie's swim pool. And when, when you see the contrast uh, and how they live and, and how they die, then, yeah, the world needs to change. So, spread the word. Share this video. Tag people. Thank you.